Hey there Dev Squad, Ryan here. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of network replication. We'll be using the event post login to spawn new players, replicating damage and death, as well as replicating our character's pitch. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, let's jump into our game mode and let's get spawning working correctly. So multiplayer game mode, and as you can tell right now we don't have anything in here. And just to show you what we're going to be fixing, when we press online, host the server, and then try to join, our character is not there. So we're spawning with just the regular pawn, which, is, which allows us to move forward and around, but we want to have this first person character instead. So let's just jump into our game mode, and then we're going to push in some logic here. So Let's just find some blank space, and then we're going to find the event, event post login. Okay, so this event is going to give us a player controller reference for our new player, and then give us an event whenever the player logs in. So what we want to do for this is we want to find our player starts, get a random player start, and then we're going to spawn the first person character, and then we'll possess it with the player controller. So to get our spawn points, we just need to get all actors of class. Okay. And then we're going to find player start. We have a player start in each of our levels, so it should just bring this one there. And then for our out actors, we're going to get. Okay. And then we're going to get random in range. And then for our max, we're going to get length minus one. You can plug that in right there. So length minus one. And that'll get a random one of our player starts. So if we had more than one, it would just get a random one of those. And then for this, we're going to get actor location. Actually, we need get actor transform. Okay. And then now we are going to spawn actor from class. We can hook up our transform right here. Plug that in. And then we're, want, we're going to want to change our class right here to first person character. Okay. And then we're going to drag up with this, possess. Might need to find our player controller actually, so and drag off of this, possess. And then the in pawn is going to be the return value from our spawn actor. So now when we press save and compile, should go back to this, post again. And then when we log in, it should be a first person character instead of our pawn. Here we go. And as you can tell, we can move around. We are now in our first person character, so that's great. But as you can tell here, if we look straight up, this character isn't looking up at all. So it's it's replicating side to side, but it's not replicating up and down. So that's what we're going to do next. And to do that, we're going to hop into our first person character. So find your first person character, go in here, and then we're going to find some blank space. Let's just do next to our stick input. And now we need to create replicated events for making sure that our first person character rotation is working. So if you noticed, the only thing that the player could actually see is the gun, which is attached to our first person camera. So we're just going to replicate this first person camera's rotation, and then that'll make sure that the first person gun is moving up and down. So to do that, we're going to create a new custom event, and we'll name this replicate character rotation. Okay, and then let's copy that. 
and we're going to create a new custom event. We'll name this replicate character rotation underscore server. And then the next custom event we're going to make is going to be replicate character rotation multicast. Okay. So now what we're going to do is off of our replicate character rotation, we're going to switch has authority. Okay. And what the switch has authority does is basically it tells you, it gives you one of these nodes. So if the server is running it, it will run off of this node. If a client is running it, it will run off of this node. So if we are a client, we're going to replicate character rotation server, which will just replicate the event from the client onto the server. And then what replicate rotation server is going to do is it's going to run the replicate multicast. We also want to put this on our authority. Okay, so this right here will make sure that this multicast function is running on everything. Now that we have our multicast event, which is again running on all clients, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our first person camera, get a reference to that, and then we're going to set world rotation. Okay. And for the world rotation, what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of this rotation and we're going to get control rotation. Okay. So we can save and compile that now. So now that we've got this working, before we test anything, we want to make sure that this event is being called. So normally you could use an event tick, but event tick actually takes up quite a bit of performance, so we're not going to be using that. We're just going to create our own custom timer. So let's just set timer by function name. And then we can actually go over here and we just want to copy the name of this one, paste it into the function name, set it to looping. And then we actually need to drag this over here. This is our begin this is our event begin play. So that's what we're going to be using for setting the timer. And then we want it to be looping every 0 0.05 seconds. And that should be quick enough to where we shouldn't notice any difference. So lastly, we just want to make sure that our events are being called correctly. So this one we want to run on server. And then this one we want to make sure is a multicast. And save and compile that now. And now we can press play. What's our server? Okay. Wait for this to join. There we go. So now we can walk in front of our character. And as you can see, our pitch is now replicating. Now, if you start to see that it's a little snappy, just increase the, sorry, decrease the time that this time right here. So decrease this. Um, we're just going to set this to maybe 0 0.35. We can try that out. Okay, so definitely definitely looks a little better. It's not snapping as much. We're just going to leave it right there. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a replicated function for our def. So let's just go ahead and jump into our first person character. Before we get started on the death replication, I just wanted to show you something. So we're going to call a switch has authority here. Okay. And then off of authority, we're going to go ahead and destroy actor. So right now, this is only running whenever the server is the client. Or sorry, whenever a server is possessing this first person character. So if we press play. And then online host, as you can tell, the character is correctly destroyed. But if we hook it up to the remote instead of the authority, go ahead and click save and compile, press play, we host a game, nothing's going to happen to this character. And if we join, you'll notice, even though this is a client right here, that destroy actor never happened. And it's not because the event isn't running, because if you put a print string, 
in between this and this, the print string would run, but the actor is not destroyed. And the reason for that is, is that it's being called on the remote, and the server doesn't know to destroy it. So that's why we have to create a replicated death function. So let's just hook this all back up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create the actual logic for it. So first off, let's grab this character rotation replication. There we go. Let's move over into some blank space over here. And we're going to create a custom event. We'll name this death. And then we're going to create another custom event and another custom event. And let's just copy death. And then let's rename this one death underscore server. Okay. And then we're going to rename this one death underscore multicast. Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern. So what death is going to do is again, switch has authority. If it's a client, then we're going to call death server. If it's authority, we're going to call multicast. And then we can hook up our death server to our death multicast. And then what our death multicast is going to do is just simple death. We're just going to destroy actor. And then lastly, we just need to make sure that these are replicated. So multicast. And then run on server. Okay. So that is all for our death replication. And we can just death. We're not going to test this out just yet. We're going to wait until we do the damage replication just because it takes quite a bit of time to go and host a server and then join it just to show you. So we're actually going to move on to the damage replication, which will then allow us to test it. So for damage, we are going to have to create two variables. Name this health and then max health. Okay. And then for health, we want this to be rep notify. And then now that we have our health as a rep notify, we have this on rep health function. And for on rep health, we are going to get the value of health, check if it's less than or equal to zero. And if it is, then we're going to call our death function. So true and then death. Okay, so we can save and compile that now. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to create an event for applying damage. So apply damage. Then we can get health less than, or sorry, we need to do health minus, and then we need an input event here, or sorry, an input, uh, and we're going to name this damage. And then health minus the damage. We're going to set that to health. But before we do, we're actually going to clamp this. And we'll make the minimum zero and our max, max health. And we can hook this up. Save, compile. And we want to set our max health to 100 and then our health to 100. We can save and compile that now. And then just to test it, we're going to go ahead and on begin play, we will apply damage, apply 100 points of damage, save and compile that. And now when we go ahead and test it, both of our clients, both the client and the server should now destroy. Yep. So that one's working fine. Let's go over to our client. Join, and death is working on that one as well. OK. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually apply damage and make sure it's replicated. So we're going to do that with the first person projectile, which you can find under first person BP, blueprints, first person projectile. So we're going to go delete this. And first things first, we're going to go and create 
everything that we need to on the first person projectile. So instead of adding impulse at location, we are just going to destroy all this stuff. And then now what we're going to use is apply damage. And this event always runs on the server. So that'll make sure it's replicated. And then basically let's just skip this check. Event hit apply damage. And the damage actor is going to be other. Base damage is going to be, let's just do 10. And then we can save and compile this. And then for our first person character, actually gonna move over into some, into some blank space and we're gonna use the event any damage. So what any damage is gonna do is it's just gonna call our event apply damage. And then looks like we can save and compile. Now we can go over here, press play, go ahead and host. Now we can join and looks like we're not, there we go, hitting our character. And as you can tell, our player just died, they're unable to move. So everything is working on that end. All right, everyone, that's the end of this video, and I hope you learned something new. This is actually going to be the last video in the series, so I hope that by now you have a pretty decent start for your new multiplayer game. In the future, we'll be announcing a more advanced multiplayer series, so stick around for that. Thanks for watching, stay awesome, and keep creating.